The Elephant in the Brain by Kevin Simler and Robin Hanson. This summary is brought to you by Hook My Book. In this book, the authors discuss how most of the time, humans act out of selfish reasons and try to deceive themselves and others about these motives. However, it also discusses how being aware of these motives can have some benefits, such as being more self-aware and understanding our hypocrisies. The human brain is designed to deceive itself to hide its motives from other people. Self-deception is a ploy our brains use to look good while behaving badly. It's also important to understand that our hidden motives are part of a larger cluster of concepts that go beyond just selfishness. For example, being competitive and social animals, we are also designed to deceive ourselves when it comes to our social status. The research on self-deception points out that humans are strangers to ourselves, and that we rely on self-deception to function smoothly in social situations. Many cognitive and social psychological studies have been conducted which suggest that self-deception is a common and effective mechanism by which we deceive others. People are always judging each other. People might judge someone's motives based on their actions or thoughts. For example, Someone might judge someone's motives for wanting to be friends with them, or for wanting to be their ally. People might also judge someone's motives for wanting to be a leader. People might think that someone's motives are selfish, but in reality, someone's motives might be pretty. Why we hide our motives? Social grooming is an act that primates use to cleanse themselves and build trust with one another. Primates groom each other because it helps them form alliances and improves their chances of survival. Grooming also has a political function, it conveys messages like, I'm willing to help you, and, I'm comfortable around you. For example, babbler males in groups compete for dominance and mates by helping each other and the group in a variety of ways, but the benefits to the individual are primarily prestige status and mating opportunities. Higher-ranked babblers often try to take over from the gamma male from guard duty, for example, and so by helping others they increase their chances of survival. The author argues, self-interest, as the root of this altruism. Baboons may groom each other without knowing the political consequences, and humans may disguise their intentions. Competition The trees in a dense forest compete to get the most sunlight and are therefore more likely to survive. Human beings are similar to redwoods in that their intelligence is most apparent in environments where there is competition. The social brain hypothesis is the idea that our ancestors got smart to compete against each other in social and political scenarios. Social status is a measure of respect and influence in a group. It can be either dominance, which is the result of being able to intimidate others, or prestige, which is the result of being an impressive human specimen. Dominance is often associated with competition, while prestige is less competitive. Both forms of status can produce positive side effects, such as art, science, and technological innovation, but the prestige seeking itself is more nearly a zero-sum game, which helps explain why we sometimes feel pangs of envy at even a close friend's success. Norms In a situation where someone else cuts in line ahead of you, you may feel an adrenaline rush, your heart races, and your face may flush red. This is a behavioral toolkit that humans inherit from our forager ancestors, behaviors and reactions that may not always make sense in a modern context, but are useful in situations where people are facing people they know rather than strangers on the street. Most norms, which are conventions about how members of a community should behave, are beneficial and help to suppress competition. Gossip is a way of curtailing bad behavior. It can be mean-spirited and hurtful, but it is also an important process for curtailing bad behavior, especially among powerful people. Gossip is also a way of incentivizing people to help enforce norms. There is a norm against showing off and bragging, and it is frowned upon. This norm is important because it helps to create a community where people are judged on their own merits, rather than their status within a group. When someone exhibits bragging or show-off behavior, it is usually an indication that they are trying to increase their influence or dominance within a community. This can be a threat to the community as a whole, and so the norm against bragging is part of a wider norm against dominance and selfish motives. 
Cheating. Most of the time, we cheat because it is easier and more convenient than following the rules. We have evolved brains that are good at detecting cheaters and norm violators, and we have emotions that help us stay away from shame. Self-deception. The red milk snake wears stripes to pose as a deadly coral snake. Some orchid species mimic other flowers in order to attract pollinating bees, but without providing any nectar in return. Deception allows us to reap certain benefits without paying the full costs. There's a wide base of evidence showing that human brains are poor stewards of the information they receive from the outside world. But this seems entirely self-defeating, like shooting oneself in the foot. If our minds contain maps of our worlds, what good comes from having an inaccurate version of these maps? The new school of psychology, which focuses on evolutionary reasoning, believes that self-deception is primarily outward-facing, manipulative, and ultimately self-serving. When self-deception is not useful, it is counterproductive and can lead to negative consequences. Rationalization is the process of creating a story that explains why someone did something, even if the story isn't true. People do this to make themselves look good, or to make what they did seem less bad. The brain is very good at rationalizing its behavior. For example, when someone is asked why they stormed out of a meeting, they may come up with a fake reason like arthritis. Body language. Body language is a way to communicate without using words. Nonverbal communication is meaningfully related to the messages it is conveying, and body language is one example. People use body language to show their emotions, interests, and relationships. Body language is also functional, which means that it has material consequences. For example, an open posture is more vulnerable than a closed posture, and this is an honest signal to the person displaying the open posture. Nonverbal communication plays an important role in politics, as it does in many other aspects of life. Nonverbal cues can show trust, loyalty, leadership, and followership, among other things. Humans use body language to social groom, establish friendships, and coordinate with others. Symbolic language also often communicates political messages. For example, when a leader makes an appearance at a meeting, they often reveal themselves by removing their coat and lowering their voice. Nonverbal communication is a lot more ambiguous than verbal communication, which is why it's easier to hide intentions with nonverbal communication. Body language can also help us avoid accusations of propriety violations. Body language also facilitates discretion by being less quotable to third parties. Laughter. Humans are strange because we tend to laugh involuntarily and without knowing why. We laugh at different things and for different reasons. Laughter is an important social behavior that helps us bond and communicate. People can be ignorant about laughter's meaning and purpose because it is outside of our conscious control. This ignorance is due to our brains wanting to hide something, in this case, laughter's purpose. However, the meaning of laughter we're playing is innocent and above board. Laughter is like money in that it doesn't bother us to admit it exists, but we might be embarrassed to reveal our credit card statements to the world. Consumption Keynes predicted that in the future, people would work fewer hours and lead more leisurely lifestyles. Yet many people in the 21st century work nearly as many hours as our great-great-grandparents did. This is because we are locked in a rat race where we use purchases to show off our wealth. We buy environmentally friendly, green, products to help the environment, but often do it for other reasons such as to show off to others. Consumer behavior is driven by a desire to signal positive qualities to others. Clothing, for example, can signal different things to different people, such as egalitarian values, youthfulness, or sexual openness. Additionally, stories we tell about why we bought a product can also signal different things. For example, if a person buys running shoes because they got excellent reviews from a magazine, they might signal their conscientiousness. However, if a person buys running shoes because they were manufactured without child labor, they might signal their concern for the welfare of others. Charity 
Charity makes people look good to others because it shows that they are generous and prosocial, which is important for social gatekeepers, like potential mates or leaders. It also shows that the giver is wealthy or has spare time. The idea of moral obligation. The author argues that, even if someone is far away from you, and is dying from starvation, you have a moral obligation to try to save them. He also argues that you have a moral obligation to try to save children in developing countries who are dying of hunger, even though they're thousands of miles away. This argument can be uncomfortable for many people because it implies that we should act the same way towards children in our own backyard as we do towards children in developing countries. Americans give generously to religious and educational institutions, but very little of this money goes to help the global poor. Most of it goes to religious worship and other expenses unrelated to charity. Education Schools were originally designed to teach people how to be good citizens and to make them learn important information. However, today schools are used more as a way to control people and teach them propaganda. In 2001, economist Michael Spence was awarded the Nobel Prize for his work on the signaling model. The basic idea is that school is more about signaling than actually learning job skills, and that this idea is older than Spence. The model says that employers use school performance as a proxy for future work productivity, and that there are many qualities that education can give students that can't be seen in a short test or in one or two years of schooling. The most important thing that education can do is give students a chance to advertise the qualities they already have, and improve these qualities over time. Religion Religion is not just about belief, it's also about social bonding and helping others. Religion helps people feel good about themselves and their lives. In a natural setting, it is not rational to take resources and just throw them away or burn them up. However, when there are other humans around, it can be rational to do so because it is socially attractive to make sacrifices. This is because the cost of the sacrifice, i.e., the amount of time, energy, money, or health that is given up, makes it difficult to fake. This is why rituals of sacrifice are honest signals whose cost makes them difficult to fake. Religious norms constrain individual behavior in order to maintain community harmony. One example is how different religions condemn different behaviors, such as theft, violence, and dishonesty. Norms also govern sex and family life, such as when and who to marry and how many children to have. When religious communities are tightly knit and share similar values, it is easier for members to follow these norms and maintain community cohesion. Finally, the author talks about how humans are unique and how we are good at cooperating. He talks about how humans are selfish at times and how this doesn't mean we are unlovable. Sometimes when looking at humans we need to put things in context. For example, we are self-deceived and this doesn't mean we are bad people. We have built institutions to help us cooperate and these institutions may not be perfect, but they are better than anything else that exists in the animal kingdom. End of the summary. Thanks for listening.